Welcome to the Mayor's Show. As always, we try to bring you the most important things that are happening and information about them, and certainly one of the most important things today is drug, alcohol. Uh, one of the biggest problems we have, we all know about the opioid problems we're having. We all know that uh, it's uncontrollable. Uh, we're trying to do the best we can with the people we have here today. I'll give you a good idea of what they're doing, and uh, hopefully that the township is always involved in all of this the best way we can and certainly with our police and and our EMS are always out there in fire trying to help all the emergency things that go on uh, uh, I, I just I, I, I talked to both of you real quick as the first thing I got this morning there were uh, two overdoses last night and one was fatal and this is not an unusual thing in Ben Salem mm -hmm. so having said that I hope it's a segue into all of the important things we're going to talk about and how maybe how may we just keep getting help for people and, and uh, try to end this crisis the best way we can so uh, first of all uh, Gene D. Droll, state representative. Hey you doing mayor? Uh, we had the same last name and uh, <laughs> certainly uh, everybody knows Gene when it comes to drug and alcohol throughout the state has been nationally recognized for the work that he's doing so uh, I'm sure Gene you'll have a lot that you can add in here today to talk about treatment and and what we can do on that yeah. and to my left is uh manny ramirez Did i have uh, that rivera. right rivera mm -hmm. rivera ramirez he's the yes. yeah he's the baseball <laughs> player so we have rivera manny rivera i apologize no for worries. that who is clinical director of steps to recovery yes and uh, i know that's a it's a local mm -hmm. uh and, and I know you have the place in Levittown, I guess you call home base. Yes. But certainly down in uh, Bristol Borough, you also have a uh, home down there you're mm -hmm. working on. Why don't I start out with you, Manny, sure. and just tell us a little bit of exactly what you do sure. as director, mm -hmm. where the locations are in case I got them wrong, mm -hmm. and give us a little rundown about the, sure. the organization. Absolutely. Um, for me, the position of clinical director is to establish a uh, sort of culture in the uh, in our clinical sphere and sort of uh, setting and arranging how we approach uh, the clinical aspect of someone stuff, uh, suffering with uh, drug and alcohol addiction. Um, in that process, we're meeting and doing treatment team updates, uh, collaborating with our staff uh, to provide the best service we can for our clients. Uh, the clients that come in uh, are coming with a wide range of um, social deprivation as well as emotional distress associated with the sort of withdrawal and uh, after uh, already having the addiction arrested per se. Uh, what I mean by that is is when someone comes into our treatment facility they, they've most likely already entered into a rehab facility um, and or at least a detox um, and so th the substance that they've been using is already um, for the most part removed from from their bodies uh, and so we begin the process of working with them on an emotional level, on helping um, assist in, in being able to communicate what's going on, what's been the issues, uh, what's been happening in their lives. Um, as you know, this is such an important process um, because so many people are dying. And, and looking at the numbers, I think in 2016 alone in the nation, tw uh, 62,000 people died uh, to a drug overdose, and it's estimated that half a million are going to die in the next 10 years with regards to it. It's, um, it's, it's a growing problem, and I think that there are a lot of other f other uh, sort of just to interrupt you for sure. Second. Sure, you say in the next ten years a half a million people, and we use those kind of figures. Yeah, let's hope we're wrong. Oh, let's so let's hope course. that the kind of work that you're doing and Gene's doing absolutely will absolutely cut that back yeah. to where I mean that that's yeah. that boggles your mind to think right. of such a thing. Right, that that those kind of statistics and, and could it's happen. Really, and it's really to illustrate the importance of why this work is so is so valuable and vital to to you know not only prolonging lives but but it absolutely addressing some of the you know stigmas that exist out in the world uh, right now um, you know from a nationwide perspective you know this is this is not just something to keep in the dark this is an issue oh, that, that is yeah. that's yeah. that's happening to every family. Uh, having yeah. said that we're going to switch over to mm -hmm. To Gene, that represented De Girolamo, and since he said that, this has been going on for a long time, Gene, yep. and you've been working yep. on this tirelessly. Absolutely right. So, there we had to talk about maybe a little bit where, where we're at and hope where we can go. I mean, it's, uh, I know we call it a crisis, an epidemic. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can pick it. I mean, he mentioned the national statistics in Pennsylvania, 4,000 
642 people died in 2016. I mean, you just had another death last night right here in Ben Salem. Right here in Ben Salem. Uh, and, and Bucks County, this was for 2016, the figure was 169 people died mm -hmm. from drug overdoses. And 90% of them are with the opiates or the heroin. I mean, that, that's what's really, the methamphetamine's coming back a little bit, I'm hearing now, probably Manny sees that also, mm -hmm. but it's, it's still the opiates and the heroin. And, uh, you know, and as, as the chairman of the Committee for Human Services, I mean, I talk to a lot of people around the state, it's just absolutely heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. I mean, heartbreaking talking to these families that have lost loved ones, mm -hmm. uh, needlessly, mm -hmm. really needlessly. And it, it is just heartbreaking and it affects every family, Mayor. Uh -huh. uh, er, er, almost every family in our state is affected with a loved one or a family friend who is addicted to these opiates mm -hmm. and heroin. And also alcohol, because uh, oh, yeah, alcohol yeah. is still mm -hmm. the number one abused drug yeah. by far. The, the, the heroin is getting a lot of the, the attention right now, I but alcohol by Gene, far. I, so I, 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 don't know, I don't expect you have stats with you, but uh, when you, you talk about what's going on, I mean, it, it, it's out of control. I mean, we, we know it's a crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, you know how long I've been talking about a war on drugs, and I don't believe yeah. there's a war on drugs. I believe we need a war on drugs uh, to really uh, get on to it. But uh, I think another thing that I know you talk to me about and to, to most of the people is the crime that's associated yeah. To, yeah. With, with the drugs. Our Director of Public Safety, Fred Harron, I mean, he'll tell you right yep. now that nine out of 10 people that Ben Salem police arrest yep. have a drug problem. And they're committing all these breaking into homes, breaking into yep. cars, uh, shoplifting at the malls and stuff. They all have an addiction and all, almost all of them to these opiates or heroin, Mayor. I mean, it, uh, it is just it's a big, it, big it, problem. I mean, there, there, there is some good news. I mean, even though the problem's getting worse and worse, and I know steps to recovery to people. They're just terrific people. I've toured their facility. I mean, they do a terrific job. The first thing is the treatment works. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're addicted, and the message I want to get out there to you is treatment works. And treatment is highly successful if you get the right treatment for the proper length of stay. And especially with this heroin and the opiates. I mean, length of stay, the longer you get in treatment, you're not going to get better with detox, and uh, Manny will tell you this, you're not going to get better with detox in 7 or 10 or 15 days. You need at least 30 days, and a lot of people need more, 60 or 90 days of treatment to overcome this heroin and opiate addiction. So treatment works. There's help out there. It's available. You've got to be able to reach out to the right people. And I know, Mayor, you, you ought to talk about what your police is doing here in Ben uh, Salem. I mean, we, your people we, can walk in and get help. Yeah, you can walk in here. We'll make sure that they... They get a bed somewhere, mm -hmm. and we always talk about beds as, a, as a, an entrance point. A person has the uh, ability to get, get treatment. Uh, we work tirelessly at this, and Gene knows. So we work with Gene. We work with everybody uh, in our police department. We give our police the tools, all that they could possibly have that, that we yeah. can have money can buy we give to our police and it's such an important it, it's such an important factor because if you look at it historically how a person struggling in addiction is viewed you know and you have this component that is the comor comorbidity of uh, the the criminal behavior or the behaviors associated with with drug and alcohol use and because of that factor there's there's certain opinions and, and and viewpoints that that people take on someone struggling in this and and the failure in being able to see them as a person uh, get, makes someone feel even more ashamed of this use, which gets them further away from looking at treatment as a possibility because of the shame that's associated with it, with acknowledging that I have this issue, acknowledging that I'm struggling with something. So having these kinds of programs, getting the word out, working on the stigma alone in a, from a societal perspective as well is such an important process for letting people know that treatment is not just a viable option, treatment also works, but at the same time, treatment is, is also an acceptable thing for people to pursue, for people to acquire, and, and it doesn't mean that you, are, you should be ashamed of this process or acknowledging that, that there's something that you're struggling with, because if we're aware and we welcome the idea that people are struggling with bigger things than just the substance, if we're not labeled just as the substance you use, then all of a sudden we, we are welcoming the idea that, hey, we understand that there's 
there's deeper issues here and that's what we want to focus on when you come into a treatment facility that's what we want to work on so that you're more likely to be able to communicate my distress my pain my frustration my intolerance for certain things and i'm just i'm aching and i need yeah. someone to talk to well manny i uh, there's many uh, treatment facilities mm -hmm. there's many many gene i mean he keeps me up to date on there just so many is, is there something that you're doing differently at uh, at your treatment center that might be different than somebody else's and having said that is there an availability for people to come in there, mm -hmm. do you have mm -hmm. uh, staff, do you have enough, as we say, beds, I don't like using that word, yeah. time, but space for people? Do, are you filled? Is it it's something that you need to expand? Is there just, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? It's a process that we're always working on. I mean, w there's so many facets to this to this thing and what, what exists and what's problem is that managed care has always been sort of an issue with trying to work out the best way to get someone in and also we were talking about that longevity of treatment. How does that interfere or work with or um, you know, help someone stay in a treatment as long as possible and afford them ability to get into another treatment facility. Th these, these things are always factors in, in with regard to um, you know, getting the most care, getting the message out there. Um, because of that, we have limited amount of space in any treatment facility, but also we're always, you know, every facility is always working on retention and making sure the person is staying in and invested in their treatment, invested in their process. But when you talk about what are we doing differently, I can't really speak to other facilities, but what I can say is that we're always, our treatment team is always trying to build uh, upon itself. We're, you know, we're not a treatment team that is, um, you know, <laughs> for lack of a better term, like full of ego in the sense of like we, we know that we have weaknesses in certain areas, but at the same time, we're able to address them and work together to try and, and provide the best collaborative effort for every client yeah. that comes uh, in. Uh, uh, can you imagine, Manny, what, I mean, when we talk about Gina, we are having on a broad base mm -hmm. the problem yeah. and trying to, and then having all these facilities that yeah. we're talking about. And I... I the funding has to yeah, be uh, yeah. almost funding impossible. capacity and funding, Mayor. Mm -hmm. I mean, at times, especially on the weekends in southeastern Pennsylvania and across the state, you can't find a bed to get into mm -hmm. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. You really struggle to be able to find an open bed for a detox bed in this whole state of Pennsylvania. Uh, capacity is an absolute problem, and then, as you mentioned, funding. How do you pay for treatment? Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's a variety of ways. I mean, you know, there are commercial insurance policies. You know, if you have a group health insurance policy, we've got a terrific drug and alcohol act here in Pennsylvania. It's called Act 106. If you have a group health insurance policy, you're entitled to a certain amount of detox days and at least 30 days of residential rehab. So if you have commercial insurance. Now, some of the commercial policies aren't as good as others, uh, but they all have some kind of drug and alcohol component. What most people, a lot of people are getting treatment from is through Medicaid. Now that's not Medicare. Medicaid, Medicaid. is like public health insurance that the, you get from the state. Now uh, that pays for an awful lot of treatment here in Pennsylvania. Uh, Governor Wolf just expanded Medicaid two years ago, which meant an additional 700,000 plus people in Pennsylvania were able to get health insurance, which has been a really a terrific especially when it comes to behavioral health drug and alcohol and mental health treatment so you've got those two steps and also the county and this can in bucks county they actually have money that they administer state and federal money to help people who kind of like fall between the cracks where they don't qualify for medicaid for whatever reason they have no health insurance for whatever reason so the county does have money that's available to help people that do not does not have insurance but but Really, it's never enough. Yeah. I mean, it's oh, not, they always right. run out of money. But so, the I mean, yeah, we have, of course. But, so. you know, as Manny was saying, this is a, a disease. Yeah. And you have to look at it as a disease. It's a disease like any other disease, like heart disease, like diabetes, like cancer. This is a disease. And you got to look at it like that. And I just think it's just absolutely unbelievable that we allow people that need help to go on waiting lists mm -hmm. and wait for days or weeks to get into treatment. And, and you might an addict, lose some of them along the way. Of an course. addict is not gonna sit somewhere and wait for a bed to open yeah. up. 
they're going to go out and you're going to lose their back out on if they want help you got to get them help when they want help if not they're going to be back out on the street right and uh, you're, they're going to end up in the emergency room, end up in jail, or unfortunately, in a lot of instances, going to end up yeah. someplace a whole lot worse. Right. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I know we call it a disease, at, and uh, and I agree with that. And every time I, that passes through my mind, I think of a disease. And what do you do with a disease? You try to eradicate it. Hmm. You try to get rid of no. the disease. Th that's what you try mm -hmm. to do. And and I think we're a point in our in, in our time. Uh, I'll say this to both of you, that uh, there's something has to be done with the opioids, how they're uh, so easily out there. There's mm -hmm. a, we, we have to get to limit the amount of these pills coming from, from out of yeah. these manufacturers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that's something we have to work on. Right. Because if you just, if the disease just keeps festering and festering, mm -hmm. we're never going to get anywhere. But... Uh, Hopefully there's some there's some things out there that we can do in the future. Oh, We're yeah. going to work on that. Yep. Uh, I, 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 and believe me, this hits every family. I'm telling you, at some place, somehow, this disease hits families. And what it does to families, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, I mean, it just, yep. it, 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 it ruins. I mean, yeah. you, you, it, it, the from families. one end to the other. I mean, it just... Right. It, it, the families need as much help as the addicts oh, in trying I, to deal with it. Absolutely. Yes. They've been, and you know, they've been I, through yeah. all, so much. Right. Now, yeah. do you do mental health there or just drugs? It's, it's co-occurring. So essentially what I was saying earlier about the, the substance abuse as when someone comes into our, our partial, hospitalization, partial hospitalization program with housing, um, the, the addiction has now subsided to the point where the person is not actively using which allows us to work on what are the what are the underlying issues like depression, anxiety, um, PTSD issues, um, issues that are so pervasive and so challenging um, that that those are the contributing factors that send someone back out once they leave a, a, a treatment center. Um, so unfortunately, we find these situations where someone leaves treatment, um, regardless of how long they were in, and if they haven't worked on, like you said, Gene, about those family issues and the concerns and working on how to cope with those emotions, you're finding that person just right back into the situation in which they had left without any progress, without any change that could help bring them to a point but, where but, they could work on those. But Manny, isn't mm -hmm. there a difference in treatment between mental health and the drug uh, abuse is it the treatment different or is it just well in in my well there's going to be sort of opinion there's going to be opinions about that very thing and i think that as a as a culture mental health treatment has always been regarded as something that's a little bit um it, it, it's something that's more acceptable for a person to receive rather than a drug and alcohol because of that those behavioral components that are associated with a drug and alcohol issue so you have someone struggling with depression you have someone with suicidal ideation that seeks treatment they they get treatment right away there's an emergency protocol that's associated with uh, someone struggling with suicidal ideation but for just like Gene was saying about detox or waiting for a bed with drug and alcohol that's not afforded the same kind of uh, emergency you know so you you have to wait for something to become available in those kind of situations. So uh, I, I would love for mental health and addiction to be treated very much the same way, but I, I know that there's gonna be disparities between that, that opinion. Mm -hmm. yep. And yep. Uh, you work on all of it. So. Yeah, well, I mean, you're asking what can we do? And I'll, uh, I think we're starting to get our hands around it a little bit. And again, first treatment. I mean, we gotta get people in the treatment. Um, the state, we passed a law that we have a, a a prescription drug database now it's been up and running mm -hmm. for about a year yep. which means that when you get a prescription for any of these scheduled two three four or five drugs which are all the, the w addictive drugs not only the opiates but the benzodiazepines and all the other addictive drugs when you get a prescription and the doctor writes your prescription you go to fill it the pharmacist has a responsibility for putting the name, the information into this database, which then becomes available to all pharmacists and all doctors around the state of Pennsylvania. Now, the idea behind this, or why we did this, and many of the other states have done it, is to try to cut down on this doctor shopping, shopping or pharmacy mm -hmm. shopping, so now the doctors and the pharmacists are able to look in their computer, and if people have gone to see a doctor multiple times, you know, the doctor should be able to tell. So I, I really think that's going to help. Yeah. We've got guidelines, prescribing guidelines for the doctors. I mean, we've got to stop the flow of these opiate painkillers that are out on the street. I mean, the, the doctors, I think, 
and I know they have because they're, they're, they're getting the message now that you can't prescribe 30 in a refill mm -hmm. for somebody that needs a five day supply because then pills are going to be sitting around somewhere and somebody's going to yeah. get their mm -hmm. hands on them sure. and abuse them. The treatment part of it, making sure people have access to treatment is so important and that's why it makes me very angry when I see this debate going on down in Washington and what they want to do, especially to Medicaid, to all the states in the country about cutting back on the Medicaid mm -hmm. and the expanded Medicaid, that is really going to be really, really dangerous, especially for Pennsylvania, because mm -hmm. the Medicaid really pays for an awful lot of our treatment here in Pennsylvania. And Mayor, I mean, you've talked about this, and I'm just, I'm, this is where I get in trouble. These drug companies, mm -hmm. they're the ones that really make me angry. Mm -hmm. and. Not all, there's five major drug companies that make, make these opiates. Opiates, yeah. They've got to start accepting some responsibility for the mess that they've created with this stuff. They're making billions of dollars in profits, billions of dollars in profits, and not accepting any responsibility for the mess and the deaths that they've created, mm -hmm. not only here in Pennsylvania, but across our country. They've got to come in here and help the states out. Mm -hmm. Pay for treatment, I know pay that's for criminal we justice. About a lot uh, we, that we, we have got to work on. The state of Ohio, about a month and a half ago, their attorney general just filed a lawsuit against the five drug companies. Right. And it, it, the five of them, it's Endo, Teva, help me out here, Matty, Johnson & Johnson, uh, Allergen, and Purdue Pharma. Purdue, right. They're mm -hmm. the five companies. He filed a lawsuit against those five companies for damages from what they created because of the sale of opiates. Pennsylvania's got to be next. Pennsylvania's got to be next. We've got to do something. Uh, we need the money to help fight this epidemic, and the drug companies can come in. We're certainly on board with should. that, and uh, hopefully we do something about that. Uh, Manny, I'm going to give you next to the last word, so anything you want to get in, or uh, I'm sure at the screen we'll have the, your uh, email address, Excellent. phone number, so Thank you. Uh, we'll make sure that's on there. Yeah. But anything you'd like to add? To well, I really appreciate this opportunity to get the word out and, and to be any opportunity that we have to, to increase uh, you know, the, the idea, the knowledge, and the, and the perspectives that, that exist with regards to this and really eradicating the idea that addiction is just this, this you know, one-way street. It's, it's really multifaceted. There's so many issues contributing certainly the logistics behind adjusting how we, how we prescribe and how we offer those things can have profound effects on the availability of those kind of drugs. Um, but certainly, just like you said, Gene, about accepting responsibility, I mean, there's, there's been a cultural shift with regards to how we view pain, how we view how to treat pain and discomfort. And so you, you have this idea that, you know, whenever there's distress or discomfort, there should be something that relieves that, that discomfort. And that, that's perspective change uh, that's necessary too. Um, so uh, certainly having those logistics is, is gonna be something that's really wonderful, but having that back up too with the, the treatment, the, the counseling, the associated response to, okay, now that you're in distress, now that you're in pain, let's find some new coping skills, let's find some new ways to manage this type of pain um, that maybe you're experiencing for the first time as raw as you can. I usually associate it with, uh, uh, when I'm meeting with a client, I talk about, um, you know, the sort of like uh, having uh, no Novocaine for tooth pain, you know, like, like you are exposed without drugs in this first uh, time around or in this now that you're clean. And, and so it's like an exposed tooth, you know, yeah. and that's pain, that's, that's, that's nerve ending pain firing and that, that can be excruciating and there's no doubt about that. But certainly, as time goes by, that excruciating pain starts to subside. Well, I think Gene brought that up. Instead right. of 30 right. and a refill, yeah. you give five pills or whatever right. they think is necessary, of course. I, yeah. I want to I touch on a couple things. Mm -hmm. uh, we certainly continue to do the D.A.R.E. program here in our elementary schools, all of them. And it's fifth graders, mm -hmm. normally fifth graders, right? Uh, you know, I, all this talk that we're doing here today, mm -hmm. I'm not so sure that we shouldn't be in our high schools right. discussing these things as right. we're being frank here mm -hmm. to an assembly. I always said that. I said, you know, we're taking care of the youngsters, but when they're in the fifth grade and now that they're in high yeah. school, there's a tremendous difference. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the environment changes. The, you know, of course, it, it, it's, it's more known about yeah. it. And yeah. So I'm not so sure that we don't make an effort to do that. The second thing I want to... Uh, uh, say, and I think I've mentioned this before, how proactive we are here in Ben Salem. 
we actually had a luncheon at our country club and invited the docks in Ben Salem, excuse me, and and the pharmacies, right, mm -hmm. to come and explain to them what's going on and how they can be a big part of mm -hmm. stopping the ordering of all these drugs. So we, we are that proactive. Right. And the other thing, yeah. pills can always be dropped off here at the township. I know they do it throughout Bucks, but our township building, you come in any time, drop off those pills, get rid of them, get them out of your medicine closets and wherever somebody could come in and take them. Uh, so remember that. Get rid of all of those pills. You don't need them there. I mean, they're, they're, they're not necessary. Give you the last word, Gene. Help is available, Mayor. If you know someone who is having a problem, who is addicted, whether it be the opiates or alcohol, there's help available. They can call Steps of Recovery. There's other treatment facilities in the area. Come to the police station and the police will help them. Call my office and I will find you help. Whether you have insurance or don't have insurance, I mean, a lot of these treatment facilities, I'm sure Steps of Recovery too, they have like uh, plans where they'll help people, uh, give you like a scholarship, even if we can't find the money available. So mm -hmm. help is available. Mm -hmm please reach out and get help. You can get better, and treatment is highly successful. It is highly successful. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we, uh, you've heard a lot today. There's a lot more to be heard, I'm sure, as time goes by. Uh, in Ben Salem, myself, council, our police, our EMS, all of our people, fire, are committed, committed to this community in all respects of safety and welfare for our community and this drug and alcohol problem is on the top of my list and uh, hopefully uh, we can be innovative here in Ben Salem to make sure that uh, we do the best job that can be done. It's more than just giving uh, our police all the tools they need. We got to make sure that we go after the drug itself. So uh, hopefully we can have a real war on drugs and and help everybody out there. Right? And if you need help again, you, you, you'll be able to reach Manny and his organization. Gene is always open. The township, you can call here, go to the police department directly, you walk in, any problem. We want you to get the help you need. It's imperative that that happens because I just started the show out by telling you that we actually had an overdose last night that resulted in a death. And it breaks our hearts, guys. Mm -hmm. It just, and it's hitting everybody. So until next time, everybody, God bless.